Good afternoon. Welcome to Sacred Hearts Parish. We welcome those present here at church and also those attending Mass via live stream at home. My name is Tom Kelly, accompanied today by Janet Champagne, who will be your lectors. We gather today as a community of believers to celebrate God's great gifts to us, God's Word and the Eucharist. Today we celebrate the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider is Father Dan, and our Mass intention is for Edward J. Duff. Once again, we hear about the miracle of being fed by God. Not only is Jesus the bread of life, but he promises that whoever eats this bread will live forever. What food has that kind of power? We know that the bread and wine we consume week after week cannot automatically provide that level of sustenance apart from us. Something must happen within us. We are required, says Jesus, to believe, and that kind of belief motivates us to behave in new ways. Let us now stand and give praise and glory to our God. Please join in singing number 314 in the hymnal, All Are Welcome, number 314. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Gathering this afternoon in this place where all are welcome, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries by pausing to call to mind the times that we have not been open to that great love that God offers us and the times that we have not shared it with one another. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, 
in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives, who reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him and ordered, get up and eat else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate and drank, then strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb, the word of the Lord. from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting and reviling must be removed from you along with all malice. And be kind to one another compassionate, forgiving one another 
as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, Whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. My sisters and my brothers, This is the Gospel of the Lord. I've been threatened with excommunication if I keep on using that, my sisters and my brothers. I've said, go ahead, love to have the rest of the summer off. Soon after Cardinal Sean came to Boston, he started meeting with recently ordained priests. I was part of that cohort. We would meet for maybe two and a half to three hours, which included a holy hour, dinner, and a time to socialize with one another, and then discussion on some particular topic. The only thing I recall from all of those gatherings, five years worth, You're not dealing with the sharpest tool in the shed here, folks. The only thing I remember from all of those gatherings was his urging us to be kind. Be kind, he said. You will bring more people to Christ through acts of kindness than through a strict adherence to what you think is right. He ended by emphasizing that Jesus was kind, even and especially to people with whom he disagreed and even with people who lived a life contrary to the gospel. Here are some examples in which Jesus was kind. The way he dealt with sinners, the woman at the well, the adulterous woman that he saved from being stoned to death. 
the prostitute that anointed his feet with oil, the demanding crowds. He never seemed to be irritated with the pushing and shoving that was going on about him. The kindness towards those who were physically afflicted up into the late hours of the night, ministering to those who had come to him for him seeking a cure, and going out of his way when he had a place specifically that he was going to and asked by someone to come here or go there, thus interrupting where he wanted to go. In another parish, a woman came up to me after Mass one afternoon and said, Father, I don't want to go to heaven if my ex-husband is going to be there. So I said, that's okay, you won't. <laughs> and I walked away. Perhaps I was unkind. But I walked away, and she caught up to me and asked what I meant. And I said, if you don't forgive and let go, you'll never go to heaven. I don't know what she was expecting. Was she, I don't know the husband. Was she expecting me to say, oh, don't worry, he won't be there? You know? But kindness is so important. Really, kindness, and that doesn't mean, you know, that doesn't mean that we have to let down everything that we believe in, you know, these beliefs, these beliefs and that. No, that doesn't, that's not what it is. That's not what it is. But, you know, there's so many people that we have brought into the church over the years. I remember, you know, a number of people who came in because they wanted to be confirmed as adults, and then they remained and you're teaching them the teachings of the church and why the church believes that. But we did it through kindness. We didn't do it by beating people over the head with a club. In Saugus, where I was, there was an elderly woman that wanted to become Catholic, and she was in a nursing home. And she loved the woman that came in to bring communion to other women in the room and on the floor, whether she was in her bed or whether she was in a wheelchair out in the hallway. And this woman always greeted everyone. One time I went into a hospital to, uh, to talk to a person, to anoint her, and I'm having a conversation. I can have a conversation with the wall. I was having a conversation with the other patient and the other person when they came back in in the well. What are you talking to her for? She's not Catholic. Well, but she's still, she's one of God's children, isn't she? So kindness is the way to go. Kindness, kindness of the pavers on the, on, the, on the path to heaven. That's what I like to think of. Good afternoon. My name is Elizabeth Woodard, and I'm the new pastoral associate here at Sacred Hearts. I just started this past week, and Father John suggested that I come up at all the masses and introduce myself. I'm in the bulletin, too, uh, my information and in kind of, you know, where I went to school, things like that. Um, if you're interested, you can read that. Uh, but he wanted me to come up and do this as well, so you had a face to put to the name. And um, I won't make this very long because we've already heard a great homily and we don't need to hear another one. So I'll just say that uh, I'm coming most recently um, from being pastoral associate at a parish in Concord, Mass. And before that, I taught theology at the college level. I have a PhD in um, Catholic theology. I think it's fascinating, beautiful. We have 2,000 years of some beautiful articulations about it, people's experiences of God. Um, and how people, and how the church came to its various doctrines and teachings. They're really life-giving, um, and yet they're so plentiful, all of these beautiful writings over the last 2,000 years that many of us don't have time to read all of them. So I was really fortunate to spend so much time in school really getting to understand our church and our faith, and it just made me fall even more in love with it. Um, 
but I found that I love ministering in, at the parish level more than I do um, just being in front of the classroom. Theology can sort of feel like it's at arm's length when you're teaching it like an academic subject, um, but ministering in a parish, you really have to learn what it means to live it. What does it mean that the gospel is at the center of your life? So that's where I'm most comfortable and at home. So what I see myself doing here uh, at Sacred Hearts is um, I'm here and available to any of you for whatever you might need in terms of your spiritual life. Now, the whole staff is here for that, um, and I'm the newest person to the staff, but <clears throat> in particular, you know, we're coming out of a pandemic right now that has been really hard for the whole world and some of us more than others. And yet there can be blessings in a time like that. It can be a time to really reevaluate our lives. What's important? What do I want my life to be about, right? I mean, I hope some of, all of us in some way or another used these last 17 or so months to sort of stop and say, what, what is my life about? Is it grounded on the things I really want it to be grounded in? Is God the center of my life? What does that even mean for me? Um, so I'm here to toss around those questions and to help provide opportunities along with the rest of the staff to make that. Um, so if you ever want to sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me, I love doing that, uh, giving spiritual direction on an ongoing basis or just having a, a one or two conversations if, if that is interesting to you. Um, so again, my information is in the bulletin. I'm really looking forward to all the various things that um, I'll be involved with here at the parish, retreats and um, adult faith formation, you know, those are some of my passions, but um, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. There's a lot of new people I'm ready to meet, so, um, so I'd, I'd love it if you were one of them. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to becoming part of this parish community. And uh, again, if there's any way that I might be helpful to you, in your spiritual life, please reach out to me. I'd love the opportunity to, uh, to have that honor in your life. Thank you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Taking comfort in God's bountiful provisions, let us bring our prayers to the Lord. For all baptized in the church, may the Holy Spirit aid us in our Im imitation of Christ's sacrificial love and forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married couples, those preparing for marriage and those who are struggling in their marriage, may they call upon God for help and guidance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those overwhelmed by life's circumstances and difficulties, may the peace of Christ bring them relief and consolation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
For each of us here, may the Lord help us grow in compassion toward one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Norma Lynch, Margie Bartley, Francis Smith Jr., Francis Spike Smith, Richard E. Croft, and Randy Peterson. May they soon bask in the eternal light of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Edward Duff, who is especially remembered at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers and concerns we silently call to mind. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, listen to our prayers and grant all that is good. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives, who reigns, God, forever and ever. Please join in number 484, Hold On to Love, number 484. There is a place for the sadness, hold on to love. There is a season of gladness, hold on to love. When pain and confusion seem endless, hold on to love. We cultivate healing through kindness. Beloved, that this our sacrifice may be made acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, 
we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember Edward, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. singing number 341, Bread for the World, number 341. Jesus Christ. 
human being where we divide your people you are waiting there on bended knee to wash our feet with endless care bread for the world a world of hunger wine for all Once broken and where dryness sleeps, where we are tired and weary, you are waiting there to be the way which beckons us beyond despair. Bread for the world, a world of hunger, white for all. At which the rich and powerful have become the least, where we survive on others in our human greed, you walk among us begging for your every need. Bread for the world, a world of hunger, wine for all. Before leaving, we have a couple of announcements. Uh, next weekend, the Knights of Columbus will wind up their eighth annual school supplies backpack drive. Please bring your donations to church next weekend, August 14th and 15th. Thank you for your support of this project and for helping the less privileged children in our community. Also, please join us on Wednesday, August 18th at 6 p.m in the Marion Grotto for an outdoor mass, followed by a brownie ice cream Sunday social. Please call the Pastoral Center to let us know that you are coming so that we can make sure to have plenty of ice cream for everyone. Thank you. Almighty ever li let us pray. Almighty ever living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call Father. 
bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go forth, glorifying God by your lives. Have a nice remainder of the weekend. Please join in singing number 551, All the Ends of the Earth. Number 551. Lift up your eyes.